Hello, my name is Nils Landl and I'm presenting the work of Michael Weimann, Reinhard Klein and myself about learning and compressing the fluid dynamics from scratch towards fast differential fluid models that generalize. So why should we as machine learning community care about fluid dynamics? Well, there are lots of applications that range from computer games to CGI to applications in industry or to basic research. And for all of these applications, one has to find certain trade-offs between speed and accuracy. And obviously in this setting we always aim for the top right corner. But speed and accuracy is not everything. Stability, for example, is also very important. And another important point is differentiability, for example, in the setting of optimal control experiments. And one really exciting field of research is how can we achieve these goals with machine learning. So in the following I will first talk a bit about related work, then I will give some theoretical background in order to explain our method, and finally I will show you our results. Over recent years, CFD and machine learning really developed kind of a deep relationship with many vastly different approaches. For example, Thompson et al. proposed to learn a pressure solver with a convolutional network. Xi et al. used a tempo gun in order to increase the resolution of smoke simulations. Um et al. proposed to learn a correction function, which yeah, improves the solutions of a low-resolution fluid solver. Thury et al. use the unit in order to predict the Reynolds average navier stokes simulations of airfoil flows, and Kim et al. propose the generative network for parameterized fluid simulations. And there are also many more works, and if you are interested in them, then check out the related work section in our paper. But there are also common difficulties with machine learning in this context of fluid dynamics. For example, often complicated pipelines are required that incorporate, for example, a particle tracer or a differentiable fluid solver, and some of these components might not be differentiable. Also, the vast amounts of training data can be a problem, and the limited generalization capability, for example, if we insert new objects into the fluid domain. Another problem could be unstable solutions that blow up after some iterations. In contrast, our approach really offers a simple and fast end-to-end -end trainable pipeline which is fully differentiable doesn't require any data beforehand, and I'll show you how this is possible in a minute. It generalizes to objects which were never seen during training before and yields stable solutions for hundreds and even thousands of iterations. So now I'll give you some theoretical background and I'll start with the incompressible Navier-Stokes equations, which describe the dynamics of the velocity field V and the pressure field P within a domain omega. And yeah, these equations consist of two partial differential equations. The first one ensures incompressibility of the fluid, so it states that the divergence of the velocity field has to be zero. And the second equation um, ensures conservation of momentum, and it states that the change of the momentum of the fluid has to be equal to the sum of forces um, acting on that fluid. And yeah, these forces can be the gradient of the pressure field, the viscous forces, and external forces. Um, these equations then have to be solved given initial conditions for the velocity field and the pressure field and also for boundary conditions at the domain boundary. And here we consider the Dirichlet boundary conditions which set the velocity field to a fixed value on the domain boundaries. Now to ensure the incompressibility of our fluid we can make use of the Helmholtz decomposition theorem and it states that any vector field V can be decomposed into the gradient of the scalar potential Q plus the curl of a vector potential A. And note that the latter term, this curl of a vector potential A, is always divergence-free, that if we only keep this part of the decomposition, we basically get the incompressibility equation for free. Now to discretize our fluid domain, we chose the marker and cell grid, which places the vector potential, the x and y components of the velocity field, and the pressure field in a staggered manner, as can be seen here on the left. And this way we can very efficiently compute the gradient, divergence, curl, and Laplace operations by doing convolutions with finite difference kernels. Um, now I will continue with our method and yeah, I will explain you our fluid model, which takes as input the vector potential and pressure field of a previous time step, and the fluid domain and the boundary conditions. And these are then fed into a unit which predicts the residuals for the vector potential and um, pressure field of the next time step. And if we want to obtain the flow field, the velocity field, we simply can take the curl of the vector potential. 
And if we want to unroll the simulation now in time, we can simply recurrently apply this fluid model onto the fluid state. To train our fluid model, we chose a physics constraint loss, which is basically the mean squared residuals of the Navier-Stokes equations and the boundary conditions. And the final loss term is then just a weighted sum of these individual loss terms with hyperparameters alpha, beta, and gamma. And yeah, note that if we use a vector potential, then the incompressibility equation is already fulfilled, so we can ignore the divergence loss term. Now I'll explain you how we can train our models without any training data beforehand. And therefore, we first have to initialize a training pool with randomized domains and boundary conditions. And we can initialize our vector potentials and pressure fields with zero. Note, no parameters data is involved here. Then we draw a random mini-bash from the training pool, feed it into our fluid model, and predict the next fluid state. This is then used to compute a physics constraint loss, and then we update the weights of our fluid model with respect to that loss. And finally, we can update the training pool with the just predicted fluid state. In this way, in every circle, we not only optimize our fluid model, but we also uh, fill up our training pool with more and more realistic fluid states. Okay, um, now I'll show you some qualitative results. And yeah, as you can see here, our models successfully learned the common vortex treats. All of these simulations were done in real time. And yeah, on a 300 by 100 marker and cell grid. Um, yeah, we can interact really with the fluid by, for example, moving an obstacle in the fluid. And we can also yeah, interactively change the flow velocity. And yeah, as you can see here, the opposite flow direction works just as well. Our models also feature the Magnus effect. So the Magnus effect always appears if we have a spinning object in a flow field. And yeah, it has a characteristic low pressure field on one side of the object. And yeah, it's commonly used in sports like soccer or tennis where we want to deflect the pass of a ball by spinning it. Yeah, our approach also works for various Reynolds numbers, so we tested out different viscosities and fluid densities. And yeah, the Reynolds number is really characteristic for the dynamics of the fluid. As you can see here, um, yeah, we correctly managed to match these character dynamics. Yeah, our models also generalize to new objects which were never covered during training. On the top, for example, this fish shape, or here the car shape, or the smiley shape on the bottom. Yeah, but we also assessed our models um, quantitatively and compared it against Fiveflow, a very recent differential with fluid solver, and an ablation study which doesn't make use of our vector potential but directly works with the velocity field. And as you can see, our neural network-based approaches were considerably faster compared to Fiveflow, and using a vector potential really also um, improves the accuracy of our method significantly. Furthermore, we analyze the stability of our method over time, and as you can see here on the right, after a short initial warm-up phase, we get uh, stable results for many hundreds of iterations. Finally, we also performed a little proof-of-concept experiment that exploits the differentiability of our method, so remind that our whole fluid pipeline is fully differentiable, and if we want to compute gradients, we can simply do their propagations through time. And the idea was here to yeah, control the frequency of a von Kármán vortex street behind an obstacle by changing the flow field, or the flow velocity. And therefore, we measured the y component of the velocity field behind an obstacle. And then we computed the power spectrum using the um, fast Fourier transform. And then we computed the mean value of that power spectrum. And this mean value is here marked in red. And for the loss, we then took the square difference of that mean value to a given target frequency here marked in green. And as you can see here on the right, after some iterations, um, using yeah, gradient descent, we can really approach this target frequency. Um, yeah, but our work also comes with a few limitations. For example, at the moment we only looked into 2D domains, and at the moment also every fluid requires a separate fluid model. 
And yeah, actually we already um, considered these limitations in another work. And if you're interested in it, uh, then check out our preprint on teaching the incompressible navier stokes equations to fasten the surrogate models in three dimensions. So in conclusion, we yeah, propose a very simple and fast neural fluid model which is fully differentiable and doesn't require any ground truth data for training. It generalizes to new fluid domains and yields very stable results. Um, yeah, if you want to reproduce or improve on our results, then yeah, please check out our GitHub repository. And thank you a lot for your attention. And if there are questions, remarks, ideas, then we are really happy to get in touch with you. Bye bye.